Hello everyone, today we're going to be explaining how the use state hook works in React with a simple example of a traffic light, the easiest example you can imagine. Maybe you know this already, but it's always good to give a quick overview on why we do things the way we do them. And you have to start thinking about React because normally before React existed, we did things in a different way because, uh, and it was super slow. It, not super slow, but it was slower, I guess. So if you have a particular HTML, let's say that I have an HTML um, in my website that I want to change over time without having to refresh the website. Uh, you know, like for example, when you go to, let's say, um, a particular website, and then I, I click here, it's going to show this drop down without refreshing the website, right? And maybe that seems obvious to you, but before, websites have to be refreshed just to change something. Like if you use the HTML version of Gmail, you will remember, you will notice that. Um, let me see if I can do that. Gmail HTML version, the old one, right? The standard one. basic HTML version of Gmail. Take me to the latest or take me to the HTML. Here's the HTML one. So as you can imagine, as you can see, look, every time I click somewhere, if I click here, it refreshes the entire website. The entire website is changing because this is old, good old HTML. Now, instead of doing an entire request that changes the entire HTML on every, on every click, we can just have a more advanced website that when you when you click on it it doesn't refresh the entire website and that can be done because there's javascript and the dom um, you can have for example uh, let's say that i want to change that p tag and i want to it, it says right now uh, all good it says all good but the user makes an error somewhere and i want now this p tag to say there has been an error. I want, instead of saying that, I want it to say, there has been an error. So, there has been an error. So all that's gonna change is that p tag. How would I do this with JavaScript without having to redo the entire HTML by refreshing the website? I would do something like this. I would, I would have to first Use uh, a doc the query selector, so document dot query selector, query selector, and that I'm gonna use the CSS selectors publicly known, but now to select elements from the website with JavaScript instead of with CSS. So, for example, I could add a class here if I want class, and I can name this status, the class status if I want. And if I add that into the into the HTML, I would be able with JavaScript to say now dot status, and it would be able to get that element like CSS does, but with JavaScript. And then I would be able to do dot inner HTML, and I would be able to say uh, there has been an error. So what I'm doing the inner HTML property of this in JavaScript allows me to set the inner HTML of an element. So whatever goes inside the opening and closing tag. So this one is the opening tag. This one's the closing tag. And whatever's inside would be the inner, this is the inner HTML of it. So I'm saying I want that to be the inner, this, I want this to be the inner HTML. I can, I can show you how it works in real life if I'm able to Select that element, let's try it right now. I'm inspecting that element, so it's supposed to show me the element on the HTML. So hopefully it will do it, but it's not doing it right now for some reason. Let me see if I can select another element. Yes, it is, there it is. So this is the the anchor, right? So I can have, I can use this class to identify it with JavaScript. And I can say from the console, I can say document.querySelector 
and then put dot that class name and it will select the element for me. Um, as you can see, well, it selected home in not Y for gigs because probably both have the same class. They both have the same class. So it selected the first of those. But let's say that I wanted to select this one. I would have to have, I would have to find a unique class or a unique selector in, 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 in CSS. But uh, let's say that this one's unique and I wanted to modify home. After I have it like that, I can just say, let me just do it again and put now dot inner text or HTML, I think it's better, just to be consistent. And I can say now, goodbye. Look what's gonna happen, one, two. Look, put your eyes on the home here. And after I press enter, now it says goodbye. Oops, goodbye is misspelled, my bad. Well, so that's how you change something. But a lot of things are happening in the background because the DOM, as you may already know, the HTML is a hierarchy. Right, so when I when I have a website, it always starts on one parent, and then I start adding more tags. So I would add, for example, I could start with my body, and then after body, I decided to add another tag that it's a div, and then I'm gonna grab, I'm gonna draw it first because I don't want to be switching between the tools, the tool set. I'm just going to grab a big, a big website, not a big one, actually a pretty small one, but big for us in this example. This is a classic structure of an HTML. It has a, a graph like this, right? Maybe I have another one here and it keeps going. You know, a website can be huge and normally they are actually, for example, this website, when you go to the elements, you see a lot of tags, you know, it's a complicated hierarchy. And if I keep expanding, you'll see that it goes and goes and goes and goes and it never ends. Let's see it. Look, if I expand this, I have more. If I expand, I have more. I have more. I can expand this section and then I can expand this one and then I can expand this one. And then I can expand this one and then I can expand this one. So it's like a lot. It's huge of nodes. So this, this tree that I'm drawing here it's huge it doesn't have just this element this is more like 12 elements or maybe it has hundreds maybe thousands it, I, i'm actually sure that it has thousands of elements so imagine the computer having to look for this particular tag with the class status among all of them it will have to loop them all right and it's not even a loop it's a different type of algorithm that it's even more expensive than a loop because this is not a sequence, right? This is not number one, and this is not number two, and three. It's not an array. Actually, the way it looks is that it looks from left to right. There are several ways of looking, but let's assume that it's using this one. It goes from the first one, and then it looks for the childs. And there are two childs, right? But it will look the first child first, and then the childs of this one, and then the childs of this one. And after the... This one doesn't have any childs, right? So it goes to the next child of the, of the parent one. And then this one does have child, so it goes here, and then it goes here. And let's say that my p tag with the class status is this one. This is the, the path that it would have to follow. It would have to start here, then it will come here, then it will come here, then it will come here, then it will go up and come here, then it will come here, then up and here, then up, up and here, then up, up and here, then here, then up and here, then here, then up and here, and up, 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 and then here, and then here. So basically, it's pretty, pretty slow. The DOM is a slow process. Like doing this little line of code that you did there, it's a very innocent line of code. But in the background, a lot of things are happening, and it's expensive. And that's this is one of the reasons why the DOM, the DOM, is slow. We don't want to use the DOM that much. So React has an alternative of this. React says we are not going to traverse every element from the DOM anymore. We are going to redraw the entire HTML. So these two elements that, that we had here before. So what React says is instead of having to loop through all the elements and look for the particular, why don't do redo the entire website from scratch. So React adds a new concept called the component, right? Const, let's say that this component is called traffic light. Traffic 
light because I'm going to be doing the example of a traffic light. It's a function, right? Because it has to be a function because it's a component in React. And then in this HTML, you return in this um, inside the function, you return this HTML. And what React will do is that it will call this function a lot of times. So it will redo it. The, the entire HTML will be redone and redone and redone. It, that's called re-rendering, right? That's the concept of rendering and re-rendering. Because it's cheaper to re-render this than to have to look for every element in the website. That's like a concept that you can imagine like that. It's not exactly like that, but it's you can imagine it like that. So how do we do that? They created, um, it, it has evolved through the years, but today we would have to use something called a use state that is basically a hook. A hook is a function that goes inside an, uh, a component that enhances the component. The use state hook, the best way to explain it is... If let's say that I want to, it's because we identified on the previous example, we identified that the only thing that changes between one HTML to another is this one, this part here, right? These two things are changing. That's what I'm really changing. I'm not changing the div, the P. I'm only changing the inner HTML of this element. So I'm changing all good to there has been an error, right? So this little part here is the only one that changes. So you have to identify that in your components. What's going to change over time? And then when you know that what that changed, you're going to make it a variable, right? So we're going to, let me clean this a little bit up. I think, yeah, oops, my bad. No, I think the best way to clean it is like this. I'm just going to clean it a little bit. There we go. Okay. So we're going to clean this up. Uh, we're going to... Um, make this a variable. So we're going to double click here, right? Our code. And we're going to make, there has been an error. We're going to make it, let's call it my, or let's call it error message. Now it's a variable. And why am I using the curly brackets at the beginning at the end? Because every time in React that you are in the middle of your HTML and then you want to do some JavaScript because you want to put something dynamic, you have to start with a curly bracket. Then, then this is JavaScript inside. So that's a variable name because in JavaScript, when you have a word with a quotes, it's just a variable name. And then you end the JavaScript part and you can continue with your HTML. That's a, that's how it works in JSX. Okay, now I identify, I have identified this is what I'm going to change, right? So you can imagine now that instead of changing it yourself, because if you come here and you change it, let's say that I say let, let error message equals to all good. And then later on, I want to change it. I could, I can actually change it. I can say now, after finishing this line, I can say here, error, error message equals to, and let's say there has been an error. And this is going to make a change. But if, if you think about it, it's not going to work because every time it renders, again, it will start from the line number one of the function and it will go line by line. So the all good value will never actually reflect here. It will never say all good because I'm always resetting it to there has been an error. So that's not good, right? So if you want to change a value to another value over time, you will have to render it first with all good and then re-render it with there has been an error. And there's a trick for that, that it's the use state again. So what React did, you can imagine it like this. You can imagine that the variable error message will be outside now. So we're going to say let error error message and we're going to make it all good first. All good. Let me expand this to make it more ex easier to read. And then I can remove it from here. Right? I can just remove it. And then I, uh, since now the variable mm. is global, it's not only living in the scope of that of this particular function. This variable is now outside, so it's living, it's living in the global scope. I will have another function that I'm gonna, I'm gonna name 
let let's say set error message and what is set error message going to do it's going to grab the value that you pass to it so let's say value here it's going to say now error message it's equal to value but it will also do it will call the function traffic like traffic light like that it will call this function right so what's happening really it's resetting the variable and then it's calling this component entirely so the component will call again all over every time that i set the error message the entire function will execute again and will execute again well every time that i set the error message so i have a guarantee an absolute guarantee that every time that i use the set error message function i will set the error message and re-render and that's basically how it works it's an oversimplification, right? It doesn't really work like that. It has more concepts behind, but it's just only so you understand the basics of the, the, the use state. So how do you do it in React? Well, you will... Let me create a sandbox here. I think I have one, by, by the way. I, yeah, I do have it here. That, that's it. So I have a component, right? This is the one. I have a component, it's called traffic light. It doesn't have anything inside. It's just hello world. And it's rendering here on the right. And if I change it, you can see that it changes in the HTML, right? But now I want to use the hook, right? I want to use the hook. I want to say, let's say, let error message. And I have to do it like this. Square bracket, comma, set error message. And then I say, some people say use state like that and some other people say react dot use state it's the same thing what matters is that if you do it like this without the react dot you have to import it at the top like this okay and then i can start by saying hello and then that's my default value for error message and i'm gonna put it here so as you can see it says now hello because my default value was hello and i set it on error message but if I change error message using set error message, we know that set error message will not only change the error message, it will also call the traffic light all over again. So it will re-render the entire traffic light, right? That is not yet a traffic light, but you can imagine that it is. So what's gonna happen if, if I call this, let's say, if I add another button, let me add a button here inside. I'm gonna have a div. I'm going to close my div here and then I'm going to have a button that when click it on click it will set the error message to goodbye goodbye and I'm missing here a function like this there you go let me jump the line here so that it's easier to understand and there it is so I have let me see here, click me. Okay. So I have a button and a variable that it's called error message. When I click on this button, it's going to set the error message and it's going to call the function traffic light again. So it's going to re-render the entire thing all over again. Look, boom. It says goodbye now because it not only changed the message, it also called traffic light all over again. So that's basically the, the hook for the use state. When you use that, you have the guarantee that it will re-render all the time. Every time I use, use set error message, that's why people use it. So having that concept set, if I wanna do a traffic light, I would have to draw it first in HTML, right? So I'm just gonna draw a traffic light. If I wanna draw a traffic light, I will have three divs and I will make every of those divs to be round, right? So let me make a class that I'm gonna call round and I'm gonna say border radius I'm gonna make it 50% because that's how you make it round then I'm gonna make it with a width of 50 pixels and a height of 50 pixels so that it's a square a square with round borders is basically a circle right so and then I can put here class round and I can do it, do it here as well do it here as well and for now I'm gonna put a small border as well 
a small border of one pixel solid solid bd 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 just to see it because we're not able to see them there they are you see this is my traffic light the most basic one and then i'm gonna make this one red this one yellow and this one green so i'm gonna have here red and it's gonna be with background red background color red and i'm going to do the same with the other two right this one's going to be yellow this one's going to be green so yellow green and now you can see them on the right right because i apply the classes to them the red yellow green so now they have they are red yellow green the only thing i'm missing is this is going to be the color that is selected right selected selected color and then set selected color and then i'm going to start being red so the selected color at the beginning will be red and i'm going to say that in the in this class name i'm going to concatenate because that's possible with javascript right a concatenation a normal concatenation i can say that if so that's a ternary selected color it's equal to red then i'm going to also make apply the class glow so that's basically it and i'm going to make this of course for every for every color right so i'm going to i'm going to have to replace this here and here all over again so what am i saying this is a ternary it's a question it's an economical condition and if and an else it's like saying if it's like saying um if true then do this if not do that that's basically a ternary you remove the word if and you say true as a question then this not then that right so that's called a ternary a ternary okay so we're saying here if it's red make it glow if it's yellow make it glow if it's green make it glow and i have to put the same thing here right i have to put here yellow and green and there i am now all i have to do is make it glow right remember that it's supposed to be glowing for me let's say that glowing for me it's a pink border right so i'm gonna say dot glow pink uh, border one pixel i'm gonna re redo the border i'm gonna make it one pixel solid oh, one pixel is too little let's make it five pixel pink so if it's glowing it's gonna be pink and there it is it is already glowing the red one right if it's glowing it's pink and now how do i set how do i set the color by clicking on it right by clicking on the actual div so i can just by to finish i can just have on click and i can say when this one is clicked i want the color to be red and then I can do the same with the other ones. I can do if this one is clicked, I want the color to be yellow. And if this one is clicked, I want the color to be green. So it's a very simple concept to state, but it's a very powerful at the same time. Because what we're doing is when you click, you reset, you re-render the entire component, right? You re-render the entire component. So every time that I click, I'm calling the modifier. This modifier. Remember, when I call this modifier, it's going to not only set the selected color to red, it's also going to call the function all over again. So this is going to re-render entirely. So it's going to re-render with a new selected color. And because it's a new one, then this condition will apply on the entire re-render and it's gonna decide if it's gonna glow or not. If if it's red, the first div, it's going to have the class glow. If not, it's a second one. If not, it's a third, third one. And you can see that also in the inspector. If I inspect the HTML, you will see the three divs here, but only the glow class is in this one, right? Can you see that? Look. Here's the glow class, and this one doesn't have it. But if I decide to click 
If I decide to click, let me put this in a separate window so that I can show it. Look at this, your eyes are here in the globe. If I click, I have to make this smaller, I guess. How do I, how do, I do this that it works? Let me put it here and let me put it here. Perfect, okay. So if I click, you can see that the glow is changing. Look, boom. It's re-rendering the entire HTML. And the, new, the next time that it re-renders, it's rendering these two empty because the variable is not yellow or green, it's red. Since it's equal to red, it's going to, this ternary is gonna point red and it's gonna glow. And that's the concept of the state.